Mature language warning. Hey, howdy, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're gonna see what if QB takes control over Nerit after training? This is part one. If you want to see next part, please leave a like. It's motivate me to make more videos. And I request you to check out author named The Turn of a Hero by the Dark Hood. So do check out. And I have uploaded Naruto, X Pony, and Censored Lemon. So if you are adult, do check out. All details and description. Now, let's jump into video. One month. That's how long since Naruto had left on his training trip with the famous Jiraiya the Sanin. So far, he hadn't learned anything useful from Jiraiya. Naruto had been expecting to learn a lot from him, but so far he had been disappointed. Though it did give him a lot to think about his current self. Was he strong enough? Was he on his way to become the best ninja that he could be? Or was he just simply wasting his time? These were the thoughts that were crossing Naruto's mind as he and Jiraiya entered another village. All right, Brett, work on your chakra control tonight while I check this city out, said Jiraiya while thinking. Time to get more material for my next novel. But that's all I've been doing this entire month, protested Naruto. Isn't there anything else we can do? He asked. I'm your master and you're my student. Students are supposed to listen to their masters, countered Jiraiya. They're also supposed to teach stuff, thought Naruto. Budash, no buts. Now, go find a training place until I return. With that, Jiraiya walked away, leaving Naruto all by himself. Stupid pervert. How did he even become so strong? Thought Naruto as he walked on. At this rate, I'll never improve. Finally, he found a place in the forest to be appropriate. So he started to meditate, something he learned to do while having nothing to do. Soon he found himself in a familiar sewer with a familiar cage. So, what is it that you want this time, Welp? Asked the QB. Nothing, I just started to meditate and I came here. Why? Asked Naruto. It's simple. Right now you're feeling negative emotions, and I'm made up of negative emotions, so your subconscious brought you here, answered the QB. Then Naruto remembered his problem and started to get angry again. When the QB saw this, he laughed. What's the matter, Welp? I've never seen you this angry before, said the QB. It's that pervert that's supposed to be teaching me, began Naruto. But all he does is peep on women for that stupid book of his. I see. At this rate, I'll never become Hokage. With that statement, QB began to roar with laughter. After a while, Naruto started to get angry. What the hell are you laughing at, you stupid fox? I find it amusing how you want to protect those little insignificant humans who cause you nothing but suffering, answered QB. Now Naruto was confused. What do you mean? Don't tell you have already forgotten your childhood. Now Naruto understood. Who cares about that? Eventually they'll acknowledge me and accept me. Ha ha! You truly are stupid. Humans will never accept something they can't comprehend or control. It's in your nature. Budash, just accept it already and stop wasting your time. Because that's exactly what you're doing right now. You could be using this time to make yourself stronger, but instead you're just simply playing ninja with that pervert as you called him. Naruto knew he was right. As much as he hated to admit, he knew that QB was right. Then what am I going to do? I have no one else to teach me, nor do I have anywhere else to go. You really are stupid. Are you forgetting that you have me? As much as I don't like you and would rather tear you apart, I'm stuck inside of you which means that because of your stupidity you might die, which in turn I die as well. But QB paused to think about that. You wouldn't die of course. His chakra would simply just split itself into parts and then come back together at a different location. But that was just simply annoying for the great Bijou. He would be weak, something that he detested. It wouldn't be for some time that he would regain his full strength, and that would leave him vulnerable. But the brat didn't need to know all of that. Coming out of his thoughts, the bijou continued. I also have a great wealth of information that will benefit you as well techniques. And as for living, we'll live off the land. Life is simply much less complicated that way. To Naruto, all of this sounded too good to be true. How can I trust you, he asked. Finally. You're using your brain, huh? You don't know if you can trust me or not. But as I said earlier, you die, I die. Besides, would you rather waste three years of your life simply doing nothing? Or would you rather have a chance to become as strong as you can be and show those idiotic fools what they lost because of their feeble minds? Retorted QB with a dark, sinister grin on his face. Naruto thought it over. What did he have to lose? He was simply wasting his time like QB said. Jiraiya had no interest in teaching him. All the pervert cared about was that novels of his, while leaving Naruto with nothing. And 
That was not what he had agreed to when he came on this training trip. As for QB, the SEAL held him back. Naruto realized that. So as long as he didn't do something as stupid as to break the SEAL, he would be fine. So in the end, it was a good deal to the young blonde knucklehead ninja. Fine, I'm in, answered Naruto after a while. QB merely nodded before giving him instructions as to how to ditch Jiraiya undetected. But Naruto was thinking of the good things that would come with this. Finally, he would have a real teacher, a chance to become strong. If only he knew what would happen as a result of his decision. Five months. That's how long since Naruto had left his official training trip with Jiraiya and decided to do what QB had told him to do. Under QB's guidance, he covered his tracks well enough that not even Jiraiya would be able to find him. He'd also cut any connections with the Toads in case Jiraiya tried to use them. How? He simply destroyed the contract that he had with the Toads. Naruto was no longer able to summon them, but he didn't mind or cared. Naruto was also becoming stronger and felt himself getting stronger every day. He learned that he remembers everything that his shadow clones do when they dispel. Thanks to this, his chakra control has improved drastically. He's also improved his taijutsu. While not as great as Guy or Lee, it improved to a decent level at the moment. He's also started to become interested in Kenjutsu, but he still has a long way in that area. Where he has excelled the most out of all the ninja areas is at elemental training. He learned that his primary affinity is wind with water being his second. QB was not surprised by this. The Uzumaki clan were all composed of all strong wind and water users with a few lighting users and even rare fire and earth users. Thanks to shadow clones, he managed to control his affinities at a high level, but was complete at the moment. He was getting there, but more work needed to be done. He'd also learned jutsus for both of his affinities. He'd also managed to do the raising gan with one hand once his chakra control improved. He has been trying to add his affinity to the raising gan, but for the moment, he still hasn't gotten it down yet. In all, he was at a high Chunin to low Jounin level right now. He also learned something crucial in the past five months. His old teachers sucked. That was it plain and simple. Kakashi most of all. At least Jiraiya had taught him the raising Gan and how to summon. But all Kakashi taught him was the tree climbing exercise. But all that was over with now. All Naruto cared about right now was to get stronger. And he was getting there, Naruto realized. Little by little and with hard work, but he was getting there. QB was pleased at the moment. His container has improved faster than he had anticipated. He figured that it had something to do with his heritage to the Uzumaki clan. But most of all, his connection to that damn Yandame Hokage who had sealed him yet again. Better not think about it right now, thought QB, shaking his head to clear away those thoughts. Soon another being joined him and he didn't look too happy at the moment. Tisich, something the matter? You're helping him. And never thought you would do it. Especially since he's the son of the second man you hate the most in this world. He? It's better this way. Soon that Madara will come back and try to capture me again. I prefer to be controlled by the brat rather than Madara. We both know that he's not strong enough to defeat you. Yet, soon he will be. In time and with proper teaching, he can become strong enough to rival even Madara himself. He's also going to find out about you soon, you know. And he can't get rid of me, no matter what he tries to do. Even if he defeats me, which is highly unlikely, his darkness within his heart will always remain, which means that I will always exist as a result. You have Kanoha to thank for that. They're fools. Though I guess I should be grateful to them, because if they hadn't been the idiots that they are, I would never have been born in the first place. Indeed. For now, I'll just simply keep watching my other self's progress. Then. When the time is right, I'll reveal myself to him. As you wish. With that dark Naruto, receded back deeper into Naruto's mind until he would meet his other self. And dark Naruto couldn't wait for that to happen. I'm so dead, thought Jiraiya. Where did that brat go? Indeed, it has been five months since Jiraiya lost Naruto. At first, he simply thought that the hyperactive blonde was just simply training but after the fourth day of him not returning to the hotel where they had supposed to have had stayed in or just simply not returning to the town itself, he went to look for him. But he found no trace of him. Who knew that the brat was so good at stealth? If only he knew that Naruto had outrun the Umbu and had managed to hide from them after pulling his famous pranks. If only, back to his current problem. He had tried to look through using the Toad contract as well, but that didn't work either. Why? 
Somehow the brat had been able to release himself from the contract with the Toads. And that saddened Jiraiya a lot more than anyone could have thought. And now, he had no way of knowing where Naruto was. Jiraiya was simply using the old method of searching people, seeing no other alternatives. And that was to ask random people if they had seen Naruto. I'll use his spy network as well. But so far, even that had been useless. If I don't find him soon, Tsunade's gonna kill me. Oh yes, Jiraiya could only imagine what Tsunade would do to him if she found out that he lost the person who she thought of as a son. Damn it, ball, oh, yes. Finally, he'd managed to add his wind affinity to the raising Gan. It wasn't complete yet, obviously, seeing as it drained him from more of his chakra than it should, but he was definitely improving at least. Naruto grinned to himself. He never thought he'd be able to be this strong all by himself. He thought he was a failure, but it just proved that Kanoha was not good to him at all. Enough about that place. Back to training, he thought to himself. With that, he went back to perfecting the new jutsu that he had just learned. If only he knew that this was only the beginning of the many changes that would take place in his life. But for now, Naruto knew that he'd made the right choice of following Kyuubi's idea. While all of this was happening, Kyuubi just grinned and thought to himself, This is the greatest revenge I could possibly think of for you, Yandame. Your son hating the village that you owe oh so honorably protected. He might not hate the village right now, but soon he will, especially when he learns of all the things that were kept from him and merge with his other self. With that, he went back to watching his container train, making himself stronger. He was going to need it for the things to come. So, basically what you're saying is that learning seals can be useful. Exactly. How? Look at me. I was defeated because of seals. All right. You've proven your point. The only problem is that I don't think I have the patience to do them. We'll learn how to. You already know how to meditate. Just think of it like that. Besides, it won't be too hard. Seal making is in your blood. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Let's just start already. Naruto just merely narrowed his eyes at the bijou that was currently sealed within him. Almost a year had passed already. His chakra control was as best as it could be. He had a bunch of powerful jutsus in his arsenal as well. His most powerful being futon. Raisin shuriken which he had mastered three months earlier. His sword skills were at low kage level which he was satisfied at the moment with. Jinjutsu was his lowest skill. He could dispel them and detect them, which Kyuubi said would be enough. But in the past year, not only have his skills grown, but his intelligence as well. He could tell that Kyuubi was hiding something from him, but decided not to comment on it. At least not until he was stronger. Kyuubi was mentally cursing himself. Now his container would be suspicious of him, making his goal harder. He calmed himself down though, there's plenty of time before he would start his plan. But he realized something. It would be harder now. Naruto had grown smarter and would not listen to him easily. All right, I'll go by the supplies then. Naruto disappeared from his mind to the real world to get everything ready for his next step of his training. Naruto had gotten to working random jobs that classified as D-rank missions in a shinobi village. Was it a pain in the ass? Definitely. But money was necessary for some things such as clothing and training supplies, so he survived through them. Right after he left, another being took his place. You just made your first mistake. Shut up. You don't think I don't know that. Don't take it out on me. Besides, I think you're stupid in trying to deceive him. Just tell him everything. He's not the same idiot as before, something that I'm grateful for. He's not just going to forgive them like before. I'm pretty sure of it. After all, I am him. QB thought about it. It was true. Naruto had definitely changed in the past year. He was no longer the same blonde knucklehead that he was when he started training. He was starting to mature in both mind and body. You're right. But why are you telling me this? QB narrowed his eyes at the dark entity. You want him to destroy the village, don't you? Ha ha ha. Don't make me laugh. I don't give a shit about that village. All I want is to be free and cause mayhem. Don't believe me? Well, I don't care. Soon, my other half and me will fight and see who has the right to freedom. You think you can defeat him? I know I can. After all, I am his darkness. And in the little probability that I do lose, he's turning more and more like me every day. So it makes no difference at the end. Cube just merely watched as Dark Naruto disappeared. Hmm. I wonder how this will turn out. You're saying he just vanished? Yes, Pain Sama. Pain decided that. From what Zetsu was telling him, the Kyuubi Jinshuriki just vanished off the face of the earth. This will make their job a lot harder all right. 
But the QB wasn't the only bijou that needed to be captured for their plan to work. All right, Itachi Kisame. Here is your new target until Zetsu is able to find the QB. The two named criminals just simply paid attention. Well, one did, but Itachi was also processing this new information. It seems as if Naruto Kuin is up to something. But what could that be? I'm sure Danzo will never allow something like the QB to slip out of his fingers. Unless he doesn't know yet, which means Jiraiya hasn't told anyone yet. Did Danzo not send his route to monitor them? It was a possible theory. After all, having someone like Jiraiya traveling with Naruto, it would be hard to keep tabs on Naruto without Jiraiya himself finding out about it. It seems as if this will be interesting, thought Itachi to himself. Will it be good? Well, it was too early for even Itachi to know the answer to that question. With that, he paid attention to his next assignment. Back in rain after the meeting among the Akatsuki members, a beautiful woman with blue hair and amber eyes wearing the standard Akatsuki uniform appeared next to the current path that Payne was using at the moment. And that path was Tendo, which was his most commonly used out of all the other paths. Payne, he's here. Next to her, a man appeared in a vortex. I hear you're having difficulties, he commented drilly. It's nothing that I can't handle, answered Payne without turning around to face the man. You better make sure it isn't. Even if you have the Rinnegan, you know that I know your weakness, said the man with a threatening undertone in his voice. Conan narrowed her eyes slightly at that. Hi, Madara-sama, simply replied Payne. Good. The QB is an important part to my plan. Find it. With that, the man disappeared the same way he appeared. Payne merely kept staring at the village below him. And you having seen or heard anything about him? Nope. Sorry, Jiraiya. Jiraiya just sighed at that. He's been checking all his contacts throughout the elemental nations to see if anybody had seen or heard anything about Naruto. But so far he has not had any luck. It's been a year already. I hope this hasn't gotten out yet. Not only that, but I'm going to have to face Tsunade soon. This really sucks, thought Jiraiya, crying mentally to himself before regaining his bearing. With that in mind, he went to check his next contact, all the while hoping that he can find Naruto as soon as possible. Is this information accurate? Yes, Danzo-sama. This is troubling, thought Danzo. There's no way we can lose the QB. Jiraiya, that idiot. Danzo had never approved of Jiraiya taking Naruto on that training trip. He knew the way Jiraiya was. The man was simple too, irresponsible, unless the situation called for it. But he was even more pissed at Tsunade for agreeing to the trip in the first place. And now this happens. If only Saratobi had let me train the boy, Kanoha would have a powerful weapon within its ranks, thought Danzo bitterly to himself. Nothing he could do about it now, except to find the boy and bring him back to Kanoha. With that in mind, he refocused his attention back to the umbu gathered in front of him. Perfect. So he issued his order. Root, find me Uzumaki Naruto and bring him back to me. Orochimaru-sama, what is it Kabuto? Kabuto joined his master as he watched Sasuke on top of a small hill train down below. It seems as if Naruto Kuin has disappeared, answered Kabuto, readjusting his glasses. Orochimaru finally turned to look at his right-hand man. Akatsuki, he simply said. Kabuto shook his head at that. No. It seems as if he left Jiraiya when they were on their training trip all of a sudden. And apparently he can't find him and neither can Akatsuki, further added Kabuto. Orochimaru just listened to all of this. After a while, he laughed as his long tongue came out of his mouth. It seems as if Naruto Kuin is more skilled than I thought, if he can even evade my idiot of a teammate, praised Orochimaru. Well, sort of. Indeed. What are we going to do, Orochimaru-sama? Asked Kabuto. Nothing. This will keep Akatsuki busy while I train Sasuke-kun and get him ready for me to posse's his body, answered Orochimaru with a wave of his hand. As you wish, Orochimaru-sama, replied Kabuto with a bow. With that, Kabuto left to his other duties. Orochimaru thought of the new development as he turned back to oversee Sasuke's training. Naruto was up to something if only he knew what. Could the boy have found out what happened with his clan? No, that wasn't possible. No one knew of that save himself and the mastermind behind Akatsuki. Everyone else that did was already dead. Never mind with that. Soon I'll have Sasuke Kuin's body and his Sharingan. And when that happens, Kanoha will burn to the ground, thought Orochimaru with glee. So this is the basics of seal making? That's right. Ah, this is easier than I thought it would be. QB just shook his head at that. He then thought back to what Dark Naruto told him. 
Now was the time to make his decision. Would he tell Naruto everything and hope he would hate his father afterwards? Or wait until later, when it might be worst, when the brat was already getting suspicious of him? A tough choice indeed. What to do? After a while, he made his decision. Naruto. The blonde looked up from his current seal that he was working on when his name was called. Of course, it was just one of the basic ones, but you had to start somewhere. QB looked at his young container straight in the eyes. It's time you knew of your heritage. My heritage? Naruto asked in wonder. This was the question he had always asked himself. Who were his parents? Did they abandon him? Where did he come from? The Sandame always said he never knew. Now though, Naruto was starting to believe he was lying. No, he was definitely lying. After all, he was the Hokage. He knew everything that happened in the village. Well, legal matters at least. Knowing who his parents were was a simple matter compared to some other things. Unless his parents were some sort of high-ranking criminals, which was highly unlikely. Wasn't it? Yes. The QB paused for a second after that. How should he start? With his mother or his father? After a few more seconds of contemplating the matter, the bijou made up his mind. Let's start with your mother, shall we? This would be better than starting with the worst one. At least his mother didn't do anything that affected her son's life for the rest of his life. Naruto held his breath. Finally, he would get his answers to the thing he wanted to know the most in the world, or so he thought. The name of your mother is Uzumaki Kushina. Uzumaki. Naruto thought. The first thing you need to know is that she was my previous host. What? Naruto interrupted in a scream. What the hell? His mother was a Jinchuriki as well? But not any kind of Jinchuriki. But the Jinchuriki of the Kyuubi? Again, what the hell? Yes, and do not interrupt me again, or I won't tell you anything else. Kyuubi said while he glared at Naruto. Naruto took a breath in to calm himself down. Calm down, Naruto. Just ask him anything you want after he's finished telling you everything. This was way too important for him to just simply not get any answers because of his impatience. When QB saw that his container had calmed down, he began again. As I was saying, your mother was my previous container. You see, she had special chakra that could hold back my own perfectly. That's the reason why she was brought to Kanoha in the first place from her home, which is by default your home as well. The place where the Uzumaki clan is from Whirlpool. Naruto's head was spinning at the moment with just this little bit of information. Uzumaki clan? He had a clan? He had always thought he was from some civilian family and that the Yandame Hokage had only picked him because he just happened to be born in the day that QB attacked the village. But it would seem that he was wrong all along. His mother was a shinobi, an important shinobi at that, and probably a strong one as well. And she also came from an important and powerful clan as well. If only he knew that this was just the beginning of the things that he was going to learn. Suddenly, QB began to chuckle. It's kind of ironic that so far, all of my containers have been Uzumaki's. And Naruto's confused expression, he elaborated some more. My first container was Uzumaki Mito, the wife of the Shodame Hokage. Naruto's eyes widened at that yet again. All of Kyuubi's containers were Uzumaki's. To him, his clan was beginning to seem more important the more he learned about things, and this was just simply one aspect of things. Anyway, the Uzumaki's were an extremely powerful clan. Way I told you that seal making was in your blood, it was because they were extremely powerful seal makers, which was their main skill. You learning so quickly is proof enough of that. They were also powerful water and wind users, very skilled sword users, and had very high stamina. Naruto was amazed at all of this, but who wouldn't be? His clan was amazing. It would seem that Sasuke wasn't the only one who came from a powerful clan after all. The Uzumakis are also descendants from the Senju clan. Another reason added to the list right there. Even though Naruto would admit that he didn't know too much about the Senju clan except for the fact that they created Kanoha. They split up from the Senju because they were tired of the fighting between the Senju and the Uchiha. The Senju and the Uchiha have always had a rivalry between each other. I don't know why they did, and I really don't care about it either. QB lied when he said that. Of course he knew that it was because that they were the descendants of the two sons of the Sage of Six Paths who hated each other after the Sage of Six Paths died, while well, the older son did anyways. The younger one simply defended himself but that would be saved for a later date. Basically, they split up from the Senju to get away from all the fighting and settled in an island, which they named Whirlpool or Yuzu. With the help of seals, 
they were able to form a complicated defense of whirlpools and several defensive barriers which no one could get in unnoticed. They also became like the middle way between the Senju and the Uchiha. After a while, hidden villages began to form as you know them today. Afterwards, the legendary battle between Madara and Hashirama took place in the place you call the Valley of the End, in which Madara summoned me and used me as his ultimate weapon against Hashirama to defeat him. Naruto noticed that Kyuubi said that with anger in his voice. No, it was more intense than anger. It was hatred. It would seem that he did not like being used like that. But who would? Of course, Madara lost, continued Kyuubi, and he was killed, or so everyone believes. But that's off track. You see, the reason why Hashirama won was because Mito interfered in their fight and was able to seal me inside herself and she hence became the first Jinchuriki of me in history of the shinobi world. Time passed, and she aged like anyone else. So a new host was needed to keep me in bay. As soon as she died, I would simply be freed once more to cause more mayhem. Kyuubi chuckled darkly at that for a moment, before continuing. But that's where your mother comes in to all of this. She was transferred to Kanoha at a young age, and I'm sure you can guess why. Mito died shortly after that, and your mother became the new Jinchuriki. But before going any further, there's something that you should know that happened. Suddenly, Kyuubi became even more serious. Naruto paid extra attention to this if that was possible at all. Simply knowing all that he was was important itself, but he knew that the next thing would be even more important than everything else so far. Kyuubi paused for a few more seconds before saying the something that changed the course of destiny forever. Kanoha betrayed the Uzumakis. Shizen, please tell me that this is not true and that it's just simply some sick joke. I'm afraid not, Tsunade-sama. I'm going to kill Jiraiya then. Apparently, Tsunade had just learned of Naruto's disappearance. And she was pissed. No, beyond pissed. How could Jiraiya lose track of Naruto? More importantly, why would Naruto leave in the first place? It simply made no damn sense at all. Right? Where is Jiraiya? asked Tsunade with a growl. I don't know Tsunade-sama, answered Shizen. She herself was worried. Naruto was like a little brother to her. She only hoped that he was safe at the moment. Find him then, and when you do, get him to come here as quickly as possible. Tsunade screamed to her young assistant while standing up from her chair. Hi, Tsunade-sama, responded Shizen before running out the door, intent on accomplishing her new assignment. Tsunade calmed herself down as she sat down. But then, she hit her desk breaking it into two pieces. When she saw Jiraiya again, she would kill him. Of all the irresponsible things that he had ever done so far, this was the worst of them all. Naruto, I hope you're all right, thought Tsunade worriedly. If she lost him, she didn't know what she would do. He was the only person who she really cared about anymore. Well, besides Shizen, that is. He was the only reason that she even came back to this damn village in the first place. She went to her secret vault of sake behind the portrait of herself next to all the other past Hokages, taking out one bottle of sake and started to gulp it down. If only she knew what destiny would bring next. Aya! That was the scream of one Rudumbu as he was stabbed from behind and fell to the ground, dead. Where is he? Screamed another one as he looked around, trying to spot the assaulter. I don't know was the reply of another one as he was looking around as well. Suddenly the figure appeared behind the umbu, a sword in hand. You will die for what you have done, stated the figure emotionlessly. Ayaha, what? Naruto said in a whisper. He didn't scream like the last time, something that Kyuubi was sure he would do. It would seem that it affected him more than he thought. He could feel the darkness growing in Naruto's heart after having learned the latest information. But he didn't know whether that was a good thing or a bad one. Yes. You see, the Uzumakis were growing stronger, too strong in fact, something that the other nations didn't like, especially Kumo, IWA, and Kiri. So, they combined their forces and attacked Whirlpool. The clan was wiped out, but not before they brought about half of their forces down with them as well. Your mother was lucky, Brad. It had only been a few days after she had left that the attack on Yuzu had begun. If she had been, she would have most likely been killed as well. But how did Kanoha betray the Uzumakis, you ask? That's simple. They were in an alliance with Yuzu in which they would help each other if one was attacked in their own territory and by an enemy more powerful. The Uzumakis kept their part of the bargain the whole time. However, Kanoha did not. Your mother never knew any of this because she was still too young 
But if she had, she would have never had been so loyal to Kanoha as she was. They lied to her her whole life, and were lying to you as well. Naruto listened to everything. He couldn't believe all of this. All the time he had been fighting for a village that had betrayed his own clan. And his mother as well. He clenched his fists. They would pay. Kanoha would definitely pay. He'd make sure of it, even if it was the last thing he did. Suddenly, there was a chuckle. He? It would seem as if it's my turn now. QB just sighed at the familiar voice. It would seem as if this would be a problem. Who said that? Asked Naruto as he looked around. That would be me. Next thing Naruto knew, another him appeared. Except it wasn't completely him. This him had ruby eyes just like the QB and looked darker than himself. Who are you? Simple. I'm you. What? That's impossible. I'm the only me. Let me rephrase that. I'm your darkness. My darkness? Yes. Where do you think all your anger went? All your dark thoughts about revenge on that damn village? Do you think that they simply disappeared? Well, they didn't. They all came together and gave birth to me. Your evil self. Your darkness. Basically, anything dark about yourself. Naruto was speechless at that which was happening a lot today. So this is where all his negative emotions went to. Sometimes he had wondered why he had never truly felt anything dark about Kanoha for everything that they had done to him during his childhood. He just received his answer. It would seem as if your darkness is growing. Learning about your, or I should say, our heritage seems to be making you regret everything that you ever believed in. Am I right? Yeah. Simply muttered Naruto. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here to tell him who our father is. Naruto's head popped up that. That's right. He still didn't know who his father was. QB just looked at dark Naruto with curiosity. Why? Because I want to personally see his reaction, retorted the dark entity. Naruto's curiosity rose up once more, his anger at Kanoha forgotten at the moment. You see, my other self, our dear father, is the same person who caused you to have your fucked up childhood, who caused you to have your miserable life, your greatest pain in this world. Uzumaki Naruto, our father is none other than Namike's Minato, the Yandame Hokage. Thump! That was the sound that was made as the lifeless body of the root Umbu fell on the ground. It wasn't the only one either. In fact, the whole clearing was filled with dead root Umbu bodies. The only other living person was a person whose entire body was covered by a black cloak. You really couldn't see anything else about the person, except for the sword he or she was currently holding in his or her hand. Imbeciles! muttered the figure. You could tell from the voice that it was a female. Danzo, you piece of shit. It seems as if you must be desperate if you're sending this many of your damn lackeys. I wonder what's going on for you to have done this. Continued to rant the now identified female. I can answer that. With that, another person joined the first one. This one was covered with a black cloak, just like the first one was. Unlike the first one, though, this one was a male. Oomph. What the fuck do you want? Asked the woman in an irritated voice. Ho, 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 ho. Pissed are you? Said the man with humor in his voice, unlike the woman. Tell me why you're here, or I'll slice your fucking head off. All right, all right. The second figure said as he raised his hands in a surrendering manner. It seems as if Kushina's son has gone missing for about a year now. Kushina's son? From that statement, the female's whole demeanor changed to a more friendlier one. What do you mean he's gone missing? He? Exactly what I said. Apparently, he was on a training trip with Jiraiya, but he went missing. It seems as if he just left Jiraiya for some reason. He's been looking for him all over the place, but he can't find him anymore. So, that's why Danzo sent this many of his rude operatives then. He doesn't want to lose the power of the QB, muttered the female. Exactly. This is good. No, far from good. This is perfect. I've always wanted to get him from that hellhole. But he was always watched by those Umbu under the command of the Sandame. But now that he's left the village in Jiraiya, all I have to do is find him. How? He's gone under the radar, off the face of the earth. Finding him will be difficult. Not only that, but I thought you wanted to kill Danzo, as well as find your other target, asked the male. They can wait for now. I might never have another opportunity like this. I'll find Naruto Kuen and keep him safe. That's a promise. With that, the female left the clearing, intent on finding her new objective as fast as possible. My, my, muttered the male. She seems enthusiastic. I better watch her back, just in case. With that, he too left the clearing, following his companion. QB didn't know what he wanted to do the most right now. He could either just let Dark Naruto continue, 
or he could try to strangle him. But then QB thought about the second one. There was no way he could strangle Dark Naruto because he was trapped behind the cage that was held closed by the seal of the Yandame. Not only that, but his claws were too big to fit through the opening between the bars of the cage in the first place. So he couldn't hurt or kill Dark Naruto. That just plain sucked. If he ever met the Yandame again in the afterlife, if he ever died, that is, he would tear him to pieces for making him unable to kill someone when he wanted to. But enough about that. Let's get back to the conversation. What? Naruto said at a loss of words, You heard me. Your father is none other than Namike's Minato, the Yandame Hokage, or the man who made your life a living hell. Any of those will do, but personally, I prefer the last one. Naruto didn't know what to say to that. When he was just a little kid, he had always looked up to the Yandame, but now that he knew that he was his father, he didn't know what to feel about him. His own father was responsible for the life that he had, and it wasn't a good one. I could tell that you're pretty confused right now. Not that anybody can blame you, since you just learned who your father is. But still, there's nothing to be confused about. What the hell are you talking about? I just learned that the Yandame, the guy who sealed the QB inside of me, who caused me to have my fucked up childhood, is my father. Yeah, there's nothing to be confused about, yelled Naruto as he waved his arms around to emphasize his point. Exactly. Glad to know that you see my point. Dark Naruto said as he grinned from ear to ear. Naruto just simply screamed to bend out his frustration. But it was a scream full of anger, powerful enough, since he was inside his mind, to send Dark Naruto to his knees from the shockwave. QB just covered his ears. The scream lasted for a few more seconds. Then Naruto calmed down a little. Feeling better? Asked Dark Naruto as he got up. No, I just want to rip something apart right now. Ha ha ha. That's how I feel all the time. Would you just shut the fuck up? Calm yourself down. Dark Naruto suddenly turned serious. It wouldn't do anybody any good if you let your anger take control of you and as a result die. You don't want to turn like the Uchiha, do you? Naruto took deep breaths in, trying to control his anger. Dark Naruto was right. Letting anger control you was certainly a foolish thing. Good. Now. Now nothing. I wasn't done yet. Who gives a shit? There's nothing else he needs to know at the moment. Dark Naruto turned to his other self. What are you going to do now, my other self? Kano? Muttered Naruto. I once thought of that place as my home. I thought I had a bunch of friends there. I thought that with enough time, they would come to recognize me. And now, now, said Naruto as his eyes turned crimson, just like the QB. All I want to see is that place destroyed. They betrayed my clan, my mother, and me. My father, he said the title with disgust, made my life a living hell, all to protect those useless pieces of shit. I'm making a promise right now that I won't stop until they pay for all they did. I'm going to become strong enough to avenge my clan. That's a promise. Dark Naruto just grinned, feeling Naruto's darkness within his heart increasing, making his power increase as well. It was better than he had ever expected. QB just simply silently watched all of this while thinking, it seems as if Kanoha has its days numbered. Well, Yandame, in the end your novel sacrifice was in vain, because Kanoha is going to be destroyed by the last person that you would have ever suspected your son. What do you have to say for yourself? Please, have mercy. Wrong answer. Jiraiya just screamed in a high pitch as he was pounded into the ground by Tsunade. You see... Jiraiya had just arrived to Kanoha after he was told by a squad of Umbu that Tsunade had ordered him to return to the village immediately. Jiraiya was shit-scared all the way back to Kanoha. He suspected that Tsunade had learned that he lost Naruto. Why else would she have ordered him to return? Unless some other problem had arisen, which he doubted. His fears were confirmed the second he stepped into her office as he was beat senseless by his teammate, asking him where Naruto was. It was a fact that he had no idea where the brat was. He searched everywhere, all his contacts, but no one had heard or seen him. Not only that, but he had cut off all ties with the toad somehow, something that hurt him. He thought that someday Naruto would become the next holder of the toad summoning contract, just like Minato, but it would seem as if it would never happen now. Unless he brought the brat back, and things returned to where they used to be, but that seemed like an impossible outcome. After a few more minutes of Jiraiya getting beat the crap out of him, Tsunade calmed down enough to talk to him. Jiraiya, you better hope he's alright, or else I will kill you. You hear me? She said dangerously. Jiraiya just nodded, understanding her anger. 
He had messed up this time, big time all right. There was no one he could blame for this. It was all him. Good. Now get out of my office before I start beating you again. Jiraiya quickly left, thankful that it hadn't been worse than it had been. Tsunade sighed as she made to sit down. She would have to tell all of Naruto's friends what had happened. She only hoped that they would take it well, especially Sakura. After all, all of her teammates were now gone. Uchiha Sasuke just sighed as he walked back to his room in the base that he, Orochimaru, Kabuto, and many other sound shinobi currently were residing in. Today, the training had been brutal, but he wasn't complaining. As long as he got the strength to kill Itachi, he didn't care about anything else. But currently, something else was occupying his mind. That was his old teammate Naruto. Dope. What are you up to? You see, Sasuke had just found out that Naruto had managed to sneak out from his training trip with Jiraiya undetected from Orochimaru and Kabuto. But it didn't make sense to him. Why would he leave? Naruto's dream was to become strong enough so that he could become Hokage. And what better way to do it from a Sanin, right? He reached the door to his room, opened it, closed it, and went to get some rest for tomorrow's training all the time not thinking what the future would bring next. The two figures were currently traveling at high speed through the land of Fire's Forest. Would you slow down, screamed the male. If you can't keep up, then don't even try to follow me, because I'm not slowing down, yelled back the female. Here I am, trying to help her. And what do I get? Screaming, that's what, complained the male. The female just ignored him, focusing on finding the last location in which Naruto was seen at. Honestly, that Jiraiya... How could he let a genin leave undetected just like that? Then again, this is Jiraiya I'm talking about. He was probably distracted by some random woman. And Naruto Kun, to think he managed to pull it off? I'm so proud of him. Thought the female. Hey, you mind telling me why you're trying to find this kid? I mean, I know he's Kushina's son, but still? Asked the male. The female just looked back at him. I'm trying to help him because I wasn't able to do so when he was younger. I know I should have tried harder, but certain circumstances made it impossible, and you know very well what those were. Now I'm trying to correct my mistake, any way possible, and no one is going to stop me. With that, she turned back, looking forward. I see. And you wouldn't have alternative motives for doing this, am I right? The male asked as he wiggled his eyebrows, showing what he meant. The female's eyebrows twitched. If you ever say that again, I'll rip your fucking balls off. Am I clear? Crystal? Good. The male simply shook his head silently. Of course he knew a lot about Uzumaki Naruto. A lot more than his partner did, but she didn't even know that. And he wasn't going to tell her either. But the male realized something. This could be the beginning of everything that he had been told. Of course, many other things had to happen before he absolutely believed that. But this was a start. Uzumaki Naruto, thought the male. Let's see if you really are the person that I was told about. Ah. Uh -huh. Get away from me. That was the scream of one fat man named Dan Hoshi. Hoshi was one of the most wanted men of the elemental nations for kidnapping women and selling them into slavery in his corporation. He was one of the most richest men in the world, had hundreds, maybe thousands of women at his disposal for personal use, had his personal army of mercenaries, even a few rogue shinobi among them, and was one of the fattest men in the world, thanks to all the money that he had. But right now, none of that matter for shit. You see, it was one of the regular nights for Hoshigo to the one of the clubs that he owned, have a couple of drinks with associates and friends, find a good woman from his selection, and finish the day off with an awesome night. But all that went down the drain when suddenly somebody, he didn't know who caused the figure was hidden in a black cloak, started massacring everybody in the club, even all the men that he called, hundreds, all killed in minutes. Never in his life had he ever been more afraid than at this moment. He stopped running down the alley when he reached a dead end. No, not now, please, he pleaded to himself. Suddenly, someone appeared right behind him. Mm. Said the figure, you really run fast for someone with your weight. From the deep voice, it was a man. Please, don't kill me. I'll double, no triple, whatever you were paid. You think I'm doing this for money? Asked the man with a scoff. Then I'll give you anything that you want. Land, power women, I have plenty of those, said Hoshi with desperation in his voice. You're a fool. People like you make me sick. Disgust was clear in his tone. He took out a sword hidden within his cloak. No, please. His plea went unanswered as the figure brought the sword down and sliced his head off with precision. The head fell down and rolled towards the figure's feet. He merely looked at it, icy blue eyes starring at the head, 
and then he kicked it towards a dead body in the ground. Idiot. People like him are simply completely useless, muttered the figure. He? Indeed. Humans like him are pitiful and weak. Nice work, though. Burn the body, and let's take the head to collect the bounty. As I said, I didn't do this just for the money. Now there's one less person women have to worry about, and one less useless moron that needs to be fed. Whatever, brat. Naruto just picked up the head and put it inside one of the bags that he carried thanks to storage scrolls, and then he burned the body with a quick fire jutsu. Another bounty. This one is going to be big, don't you think? Yeah, even if I don't need the money. Indeed. Naruto had become a mercenary slash bounty hunter about three months ago. Thanks to all the bounties that he had acquired, he had millions in his personal account. This served a couple of purposes. One, it helped him get used to killing to a little extra practice in his stealth abilities. And three, it helped him to be on the move faster. About five months ago, he noticed that someone was following him. He didn't know who, and he didn't want to find out either. This was the shinobi world after all. He was now 15 years old, almost 16. He was taller now, something he was graceful for, standing at about 6 feet 3 inches. His voice had also deepened, another thing that he was grateful for. He was now an S-rank shinobi. His training was almost complete, just a couple of things were left like a summoning. Having discarded the toad contract, he was now in need of one. Having a summoning would definitely him as a support. After he had cut off his contract with the toads, he hadn't worried about it at all. But thanks to QB's reasoning and his own thoughts of the subject, he decided that having one would be a good advantage over his future opponents. I still don't know what summoning will be a good one, though, thought Naruto as he continued to walk towards one of the cash houses. I have one in mind, but I'll tell you after we collect the money and get some rest. Good idea. Chidori. The sound of birds chirping could be heard as Sasuke smashed his favorite jutsu on a gigantic boulder. He smirked as he saw how the rock went into thousands of little pieces. He could now do the Chidori for more than two times, and thanks to the curse mark and his chakra levels increasing, it could become even more powerful. Yes, Sasuke thought in satisfaction, my training is almost complete, and then I'll be able to kill Orochimaru. Sasuke was fully aware of what Orochimaru's intentions were since the beginning, and there was no way in hell that he was about to let that snake freak take control of his body. After all, I still haven't experienced the best part of being young. Indeed, Sasuke couldn't wait to find a suitable woman to recreate his clan. Contrary to popular belief, he had always been interested in the opposite sex, but not the ones that had always surrounded him. He wanted a woman that was strong, one who could defend herself and keep up with him, as well as have a backbone, a real kunoichi. Not all the girls in the academy whom he met, and that didn't know anything related to being a ninja. All they cared about were his name and his looks not even bothering in trying to get to know him before saying that they loved him. Talk about shallow. Better not waste my thoughts on them. I have better things to worry about. For example, his old teammate and the only person he had ever considered a friend Naruto. Dobe, you better have gotten stronger or else I'm going to be disappointed when we meet. Sasuke wanted a rematch with Naruto to truly fight him and neither to hold back. He didn't count when they fought at the Valley of the End since Naruto had let him win after all, something that he didn't like at all. That was why he had spared him, among other reasons. Yes, that's something else to look forward to. With that last thought, he resumed his training. Okay, this is bullshit. How long have tracked this kid for? And still we haven't found him yet. Be a man and stop winning, will you? Tisich. Indeed, it had been about nine months since both of the unknown shinobi had started looking for Naruto, but they couldn't find him no matter what they did. Whenever they found a trace of him, it lead to nowhere, and then they found another one, and the pattern kept on repeating. That kid had impressive skills for hiding his tracks, reason the male. Kanoha was an idiot for mistreating him. As for his partner, she was focusing on detecting anything that will lead them, or better yet, her, to Naruto. She didn't care about her partner at the moment. They were investigating the exact alley in which Naruto had killed Hoshi the night before. Not that they knew, of course. Okay, someone was definitely here, stated the female as she looked at the dried blood on the ground. Yeah, and someone was also killed here, retorted the male. You are really starting to irritate me. Yeah, well, what else is new? The female just rolled her eyes. Come on, let's follow the scent. With that, they moved on street from street and then out to the outskirts of the village until they came into a building that they both recognized instantly. 
and it also surprised them both greatly. One of those cash houses where bounties are collected, stated the male with surprise present in his voice. Yeah, the female didn't say anything else, but her mind was working over time. If he was here, it could only mean one thing he was collecting a bounty, which means that he's become a bounty hunter, and the blood we saw earlier in that alley was of his last target. Interesting. I would never have thought that you had it in you, Naruto Kuen. Once again, you amaze me. With that in mind, she moved toward the building, and her companion had no choice but to follow her. Ha! Huh. I would never have thought that that kid could kill in cold blood. I wonder what else has changed, muttered the male, coming to the same conclusion as his partner as to why they were here. It seems as if he's finally growing up, responded the female. Maybe, muttered the male, although he had to agree. The two of them reached the door and the female knocked on the door, and some creepy guy with one eye opened it halfway. Can I help you? He said in a hard voice. Yes, we're looking for someone. We believe he came this way. Can you help us identify him? Said the female in a cheerful voice. No. Now leave. With that, the man slammed the door, leaving an irritated woman on the other side. Ha 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 ha. It seems you lost your feminism. It would seem as if age is catching up to you. That's it. With that comment from her partner, the female kicked the door open, finding a shocked man on the other side. But that wasn't the only thing. It would seem as if he was about to have intercourse with a young lady about 16 years old. The male whistled. Ha! Ah, now we know why he was so hasty. I take back my comment about you being old. The female didn't pay attention to him. Rather, she suddenly appeared on the other side of the room with the man on her hold, choking him. Her sword pointed at what made him a man. Now that wasn't very nice, was it? Didn't your mother ever tell you that it's not nice to slam doors at women when they want something? Her companion was laughing his head off in the background. Now, if you don't want to lose your friend, I suggest you tell us who we're looking for. TCH, fine. I'll tell you what you want. Just promise to leave afterwards, agreed the old man reluctantly, seeing no other way to save his precious jewel. Now we're talking. Sakura couldn't believe what had happened in the last two years. They were gone. Her teammates, both of them, were gone. Why? That was the only thing that she could ask herself. Why would they leave her behind? Especially Naruto. He was the most surprising of the two. Wasn't it his dream to become Hokage? He couldn't do that if he was out there, doing whatever it was that he was doing, and not here in the village. And Sasuke. She kind of understood why he left. Revenge. To get strong enough to defeat his brother to avenge his clan. But that didn't mean that she liked it. Even after she told him that she loved him, he still left. It would seem as if he didn't feel the same way she felt. And that really hurt her. Deep. But she would worry about her personal feelings later. For now, all that mattered to her was to get her teammates back. That was the reason why she was training with Tsunade. To get stronger so she could catch up to her teammates and get them back, no matter what. That was her mission at the moment. And she would complete it so that everything could be back to normal and Team 7 would be reunited. For things to return to how they were before Orochimaru ever came into the picture. If only she knew that nothing could ever be back to normal. If only Uchiha Itachi, the youngest shinobi to have ever become an Umbu captain. The single man who killed his entire clan in one night, including his parents. The most powerful Uchiha at the moment. He could not believe what he was hearing. Are you sure about this, Zetsu? Yes, Painsama. The QB Jinchuriki has become more powerful than we had ever anticipated. He could probably rival Itachi. Said named individual, just kept silent, but not his partner. That's simply not possible. We met the brat two years ago. He was pathetic. There's no way he could be as strong as you say he is, stated Kisame with a scoff. Are you doubting my skills? Asked Zetsa dangerously. What if I am? There's nothing you can do about it. After all, I'm stronger than you, said Kisame with arrogance. Enough, screamed Pain. Kisame, do not doubt Zetsu. His skills in tracking and spying are the best in all of Akatsuki. If he says he's sure, then it must be. You met the Kyubi Jinshuriki two years ago, and that's enough time for an individual to become powerful if he or she has the necessary motivation. Believe me, I know. Kisame decided to not say anything else in the matter. After all, he knew pain was stronger than him and could kill him if he ever wanted to. He might love a battle. But even he knew when it wasn't smart to take place in one. What are we going to do? Asked Sasori within his favorite puppet. Yes, this could prove to be troublesome. 
added Kakuzu. As much as he hated to admit it, he recognized skill when he saw or heard of it. It was one of the things that had kept alive this whole time. And unlike Kisame, he believed on what Zetsa told him. Who cares? I'll just make him a sacrifice, said Haydn enthusiastically. Daydar decided not to say anything at all. While this is not welcome news, the plan still remains unchanged. We will continue to hunt the Jinshuriki soon. So get whatever you need to be done, done. Is that clear? Stated pain to all the members of the Akatsuki. Hi. Good. Dismissed. Itachi opened his eyes as he returned his consciousness back to his real body. Fucking Zetsu. Muttered Kisame. Itachi paid him no mind. He was currently thinking on what to do now. How? First you leave, and the next thing I know you become powerful enough that you can rival me. You are full of surprises, Naruto Kuen. So this contract is really powerful? Yes, it is. Currently, Naruto was in his mind discussing what summoning contract he should get. And QB really had a good one in mind. Dragons. Muttered Naruto. The dragon summoning contract. The most powerful summonings out there. No one had it ever been able to obtain in thousands of years. Or so the rumors went. It was rumored that the last summoner for them was at the time of the Sage of Six Paths. No one knew what the test was to be able to be a summoner for them, because all the hopeful souls that went to try to be the new summoner never returned. Talk about a mystery. Why you summons? Just blow everything up. No. There might come a time when I'll probably need them. It would be better to be prepared, retorted Naruto. Ha! Ah, you're finally using your brain and thinking ahead. Ha! Huh. I gotta say, I'm impressed. But you'll have to be careful. We don't know what kind of test they're going to give you. He said the last part seriously, and Naruto had to agree with him. He'll have to be careful. He couldn't just rush in, or it'll probably be the end of him. All right then, QB, where's the contract located? QB grinned to himself. This would be the last test before he could decide whether Naruto was worthy or not. I hate walking. Don't you do anything else besides wine? Don't you do anything else besides bitch? Seriously, you need to get laid. It will relieve you of all your stress. Do you want me to cut your balls off? The male just shrank back. That's what I thought. Crazy bitch. What was that? Nothing, nothing. The unusual duo just continued walking down the road, something the male could not stand. Why aren't we tree hoping? I mean, we can do that. If we do, it'll alert him that we're coming. I think that he already knows that. Yeah, he probably does. But we'll catch him at some point. I know. How? The female grinned to herself. Call it a woman's intuition. Naruto could not believe what his eyes were seeing. That was one huge mountain. Just why did things always have to be so difficult? No one could make anything simple nowadays. This is a brat. Good luck. One final advice. Don't die. Oh. And if you fight a female dragon, try to feel her up. It might help. Naruto just shook his head as dark Naruto laughed within his mind. He could never get used to his weird humor. Naruto cleared his head of all distracting thoughts, took a breath in, and made his way to the mountain. This is it. Wait a second. What is it? The QB narrowed his eyes. Why are you being helpful? I thought you wanted to fight Naruto so that you could beat him, take over his body, and be free. I did, and I still want to be free. But for the moment, I'm pleased. What do you mean by that? Dark Naruto sighed. Just look at him. He's not being the idiot that he once was. He's actually strong now. And best of all, he's letting his darkness out. So, you see, QB, I have no complaints for the moment at least. So, if he were to go back to the way he was, then I would fight him and take over this body to be used better. You're catching up. So, as of right now, you're not going to fight him? No. Again, I have no reason to. If I were to have one, though, I see. Are you satisfied with this? Personally, I don't care because I know Naruto would defeat you. Dark Naruto narrowed his eyes. What do you mean by that? He asked dangerously. Ha! Yeah. We both know he's too stubborn to be defeated and to allow someone else to take over his body. That part of him hasn't changed, and I don't think it'll ever change. Dark Naruto laughed. But it wasn't an ordinary laugh. It was a laugh that could make the ordinary person shit himself. QB just kept silent. After a while, the laugh died down. You're right about that, QB. Once he put something in his mind, it's nearly impossible to get it out of his mind. But again, I'm not going to fight him yet. Now let's see how he does with his test, shall we? You have got to be joking with me. I'm afraid I'm not. But Reikage Sama, no buts. This is an order. Ni Yujito, the sexy blonde Jinchuriki of the two tailed cat side. But why do I have to go with them? She pointed at the team standing to the side. 
This particular team was the famous team of Killer B, which consisted of the busty and another sexy blonde by the name of Samly. Her boobs were on par to that of the legendary Tsunade, an impressive feat. She was also the calmest person on the team and by far the most normal person. Next was a dark-skinned girl who had no bust but still sexy in a way by the name of Karui. She was the one who had the most temper in the team. After her was another dark-skinned person, but he was a male. He had white hair and kind of spiky though not that much. He was a person who took everything into account which resulted in him getting almost impossible outcomes, which in return resulted in him getting hit by Karui. His name is Omoy. And the last person is Killer B himself, not paying attention to anything around him. Instead, he was writing something in his little book that he always carried with him that contained all of his rap. And, I'm ashamed to say this, but I can't rap for shit. Really, even if my life depended on it, I would still suck. So I'm gonna have to make me talk normally. Yujito really didn't have a problem with Samui, since she was normal, and she could actually have a regular conversation with her. But the rest, you get the idea. The rakage, or A side. I understand where you're coming from. Ignoring the cry of outrage from Karui. He continued, but they're the best team in all of Kumo. It will be better if someone you knew had your back, since even if you don't want to admit it, you're actually friends with them. Whoever managed to get inside our country halfway undetected must not be dealt with lightly. Again, Yujito sighed. I understand. I nodded. Good. Now here are the details. This is gonna suck, was the thought of Yujito. If only she knew how much this mission would change her life. What do you mean they're all dead? Asked Slash, screamed Danzo. Exactly that, sir. All three squads were killed with extreme precision, said one rude umbu. Danzo leaned back in his chair, frustrated. Who did it? Was it Uzumaki Naruto? The umbu shook his head. We don't know. Well, then find out. Hi. With that, the umbu left. Danzo tried to calm himself down. It wasn't easy, considering the fact that he lost three squads of eight like that when he didn't have that many subordinates thanks to Saratobi canceling his program. Who could have done this? Thought Danzo. Who indeed? How long? Asked a raspy voice. Just a day left, Orochimaru-sama. You have been putting the soul transfer off for too long. Answered Kabuto. Kukukukuku. That's because I want Sasuke Kuin to be as ready as he can be when I take over his body. After that he started coughing up blood. Kabuto ran to his master's side, checking his vitals. I'll go get you your medicine. With that he ran out of the room, to his lab, where he kept his medicine. It doesn't matter anymore, he thought. All I can do is lessen the pain. He's gonna have to transfer bodies today. I wonder how Sasuke Kuin will take the news. Back in Orochimaru's room, he was laughing even though he kept coughing up blood. As soon as I have Sasuke Kuin's body, Itachi and Madara won't stand a chance against me. Hell, not even the Akatsuki combined will cook cook As his train of thought finished, he sent something outside his door which happened to be a sword made out of lighting. He brought his hands up for defense, wincing when the sword made contact. The nature of this chakra, but I have never seen this type of chakra form, thought Orochimaru. Who's there? He barely asked, due to the amount of pain he was going through, not only from the lighting sword, but from the body that he currently residing in because it was rejecting him. The door was sliced and shattered. And there, in all his glory, stood Uchiha Sasuke. This is not right. KKK in. Pipis T try. T to C calm D down. Hinata is right Kiba. Shut up Eno. Just because he's not as cool as Sasuke doesn't mean you can just treat him like shit. Hey, what are you going to do about a blondie? Enough, screamed Niji. We're all worried Kiba. So don't try to take all your frustration on us. It had been about a week since the rookie 12 or 10 cause Sasuke and Naruto were not there anymore, had found out that Naruto had disappeared. Ever since then, Kiba had been trying to convince Tsunade to let him look for Naruto, but she always refused, which infuriated him. How's Sakura taking this? Asked Tenten. sakura Muttered Lee. I don't know. Answered Ino. She must be stressed, considering both of her teammates left, said Shino. Probably, muttered Ino. She then looked at Shikamaru. What do you think? He didn't answer her. Instead, he just kept staring at empty space. After a while of this, Ino started to become aggravated. Then he spoke. I think Naruto left on his own. Everybody looked at him. Shikamaru never said something unless he had proof. Think about it. According to Jiraiya-sama, there was no sign of a struggle unless Naruto was caught off guard. Even then, Naruto would have tried to contact Jiraiya-sama, but nothing. Maybe he couldn't, said Ino. Maybe... 
Or maybe Naruto has left Kanoha on his free will. I sense him. We're getting close. Really? The brat must be doing something important to stay in one location. What's the plan? First, we have to get closer to see where he has stopped, said the female. My bed is those mountains. It's the closest thing. I think so, too. Let's go. Yujito used her heightened senses, thanks to the Nibi, to look for their targets as they made their way to the central of Kumo-controlled land. Did you find them yet? Asked Sanwi. No. Wait. I just picked up a couple of scents heading to the mountain ranges. Then let's go, Wyo, was the enthusiastic reply from Killer B. Yujito shook her head wondering why she had such weird friends. There's nothing wrong with that kitten. Tell me one upside to this. Life is never boring, which is a good thing if you ask me. I suppose. It's a fact. Now what you need, and what will make you happy, is a man to yourself. Yujito quietly groaned to herself. She always hated when Nibi said that she needed a man. She was perfectly fine, in her opinion. No, you're not. I mean, you're still a veer dash. An IBI. Shut the hell up. Defensive are we? You know, I don't like it when you talk about this. If you want me to stop, then get laid. That will definitely shut me up. Yujito mentally cursed fate. Why did she have to get the sex-obsessed tail beast? You know you love me. Naruto continued to walk further down the tunnel he found. After a few more minutes, he reached an area where the tunnel spread out and became just like a room. A huge room. He looked around when suddenly movement caught his eyes. He unstrapped his sword ready in case of an attack. Who dares to come in here? Dragon, was the thought of Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto. There was silence. Then the dragon spoke again. Uzumaki, yes. Ah, Uzumakis have red hair boy. You are a blonde. I know. My mother was an Uzumaki, but my father wasn't. I got my features from him. The dragon came out the shadows, and Naruto finally got a good look at him. He had a red color skin. Even his eyes were red just like fire. He had sharp claws on his hands and feet, and two big wings. So, you're a hybrid? Naruto shrugged. You could say that, yes. But why are you interested if I'm an Uzumaki or not? The dragon grinned, or so Naruto thought. The answer is simple, boy. The Uzumaki clan were our original summoners. What? But I thought that your last summoner, that our last summoner was around the time of the Sage of Six Paths, right? Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Nobody knew, except for the Senju and the Uchiha that they were our summoners because they really didn't need us. As time went on, and the Uzumaki clan was destroyed, the other two clans forgot that they were our summoners. I see. Now, I'm guessing you're here because you want to be our new summoner. Am I right? That's right. Well, you have to pass one simple test you have to defeat me in combat. I thought you would never say that. He must be in here. Sounds like someone is fighting in there. What do you think he's doing in there? I don't know, muttered the female. Wait, said the male. Looks like we have company. With that, Yujito, Killer B, and his team landed in front of them. Dragon style. Grand fireball. Shit. Screamed Naruto as he dodged a big-ass fireball. It looked like the one the Uchiha clan created, but on steroids. Dragon style? Thought Naruto as he landed. Yes. The dragons use their own style, where they create techniques from their own natural element. This dragon's element is fire. Good to know. Wind style? Wind bullets. The dragon didn't even flinch as the wind bullets hit him. You're going to have to use stronger techniques, or else you're just going to waste your chakra. Something that you cannot do. t -sitch. Naruto jumped as the dragon tried to crush him with his claw. Cool me. You have to do better if you want to defeat me. Naruto made five clones in midair, each creating a different elemental raising gan. Try this. They all went towards the dragon, but they didn't count on the dragon flying. What? This place isn't big enough for you to do that. Yeah. This whole cave has seals all over the place, making it how small or big I want it. Naruto narrowed his eyes while on the ground. Well then, I'm going to have to fix that. After that statement, he threw his Rasen Shuriken at the air. Then it expanded. I see. So that's what he's trying to do. Smart. I'll lose the advantage after this. As soon as he finished, the Jutsu blew up, destroying the whole cave. Outside, they all saw the cave blow up. The male whistled. That's big stuff right there. From the smoke, they saw something rise up. Is that? Muttered Yujito. Her suspicions were proven true when the injured dragon tried to fly, but failed as one of his wings was damaged. Then he saw Naruto standing up, a few cuts but nothing serious. That was reckless, thought the dragon. He could have killed himself. I gotta give him credit though. He managed level the field. Now I can't fly. 
nor do I have the home turf. I might lose. I'm going to have to finish this right now, thought Naruto as he summoned all the chakra he had. Trying to do this quickly. Are you, boy? I don't like to drag things out. I might have only seen one of your techniques, but thanks to that I know that I can't let you do any of your stronger ones or else I'll be toast. You're too late. Dragon style, fire dragon cannon. A huge beam of fire shot out of his mouth, hotter and more powerful than the previous fireball. As soon as the technique made contact, a big explosion surrounded the area, making the others take cover. What the hell is going on? Asked the male. I don't know, answered the female. Yujito, we have to make sure they don't escape, said B. I know. As soon as the dust disappeared and the explosion died down, they saw the dragon looking where Naruto had once been. It's over. No, it's not. The dragon's eyes widened as he turned around to see Naruto standing on a ledge with his arm raised in the air. How did you survive? It doesn't matter cause it's over. Lighting style. Lighting ray. The dragon looked up to see lighting coming out of the darkened clouds and heading towards him. He didn't have enough time to move, so the jutsu hit him straight on. Looks like I lost. That was his last thought as he was hit. Naruto panted as his vision started to go black. I used the last of my chakra with that last move. The last thing he heard was QB's voice. Good job, brat. Be ready for what's happening next. Is he dead? Don't be ridiculous. It would take more than chakra depletion to kill him. How sad. I thought you didn't want to kill him right now. I don't. But have you seen who's taking care of him right now? She's a beauty you don't see often. It would be a good opportunity to have some fun, wouldn't you agree? Perhaps. Dark Naruto sighed. All right. I forgot you don't feel the same emotions as me and my other self since you're just a huge amount of chakra. And you? You're just a combination of all of Naruto's dark emotions, retorted Kyuubi. Dark Naruto wiggled his index finger with a smirk on his face. Now, that's not true. I'm his dark part, meaning I'm still him, meaning I have emotions such as lust, meaning I can have sexual desires, meaning that I could fuck that sexy woman out there if I had the chance. Kyuubi simply decided to remain silent not interested in the topic of the conversation anymore. After a few more minutes of silence, Dark Naruto was about to scream in frustration when they saw Naruto appearing in his mind. Dark Naruto growled. About time you woke up, you idiot. Naruto simply held his head in his hands. I feel terrible. What do you expect? Said Dark Naruto as he rolled his eyes. You just woke up after a chakra depletion. Why did you even use that move in the first place? I thought QB told you to use it only in emergencies. It was an emergency. That dragon was strong, and if I didn't finish the fight as quickly as I did, I would have lost. Enough of this pointless arguing. There are more important matters at the moment, such as the people taking care of you at the moment. Dark Naruto grinned at being reminded of the subject, and Naruto simply stared at QB. What people? After you passed out, they brought you to some village in the Land of Lighting. It seems as if they're the ones that were following you. There's also some ninjas from Kumo, and the situation is tense out there. Oh yeah, that blonde Kumo Kunoichi is also a beauty. It would be pretty hard to choose from those two. What is he talking about? Asked Naruto as pointed at his dark self who was in deep thought. QB just sighed. Don't worry about that. The thing you do have to worry about is how you're going to get out of here. It will be difficult considering the fact that your body won't recover for a few more days. Naruto thought about it until he asked what had been bugging him ever since he found out someone had been chasing him. Are they hostile? I don't know. I will tell you this though, began Dark Naruto as he joined the conversation. One of them is a piece of heaven. Naruto and QB stared at Dark Naruto. After a few seconds of this, Dark Naruto began to get scared, if that was even possible. What? You believe in heaven? asked Naruto. Oh, that. The dark entity waved his hand in dismissal. Hey, no. It was simply a metaphor. If there was one, though, I'm pretty sure she would. Enough. Just shut the hell up. Brat, what are you going to do? I'm going to have to see what they want. Not that I have a choice. QB nodded. I suppose you're right. Then Naruto began to feel a pull. It seems I'm about to wake up. Ha ha ha. This is going to be fun. Are you sure this is a good idea? Whispered the male to the female. No, I don't. But if we attack them, it would cause more problems that we don't need at the moment. I'd rather that we don't make enemies with Kumo. The male looked at his partner incredulously. Since when? The female just gave him the look. Just don't do anything stupid or you'll regret it. The male took a step back. I got it. On the other side of the room, 
The Kumo Shinobi were having their own conversation. Yujito, what are we going to do? Asked Samui. We'll just wait for now, answered Yujito. The fact was that she didn't think she was strong enough to fight the other two shinobi, especially the female. She could tell that she was at least Kage level, and that said something. She would consider herself at high Jounin level, perhaps low Kage. She always prided herself for being strong, but she knew when she was outmatched. Although, if B and I team up, we could probably take her, but that would leave the others to take the man, and I'm pretty sure he's strong enough that they won't be able to handle him. At the present situation, all they could do is wait. After five minutes of tense quiet and starring, the only unconscious person began to stir, catching the attention of every person in the room. The female ran to his side, making sure that the others wouldn't get to close, even her companion, something he noticed with a smirk. The first thing Naruto saw when he woke up was black eyes, reminding him of Sasuke. Then his vision cleared enough for him to see who they belonged to. When he did, he had to agree with his evil counterpart. She was beautiful. She had long black hair tied in a ponytail that reached to her back. A beautiful round-shaped face, long sexy legs, big bust, not up to Tsunade's level, but big nonetheless, and a round behind, wearing a black skirt with a short black shirt showing her stomach and the muscles that came with it showing how hard she trained, with long white sleeves and black gloves. In the end, she was the best-looking woman he had seen in his short 15 years of living. Naruto mentally shook his head from those thoughts. He had more important things to worry about at the moment. He then began to take notice of the others in the room. He saw a man beside her. He too had black eyes and black hair, making him wonder if they were related. His hair, though, was almost like his, spiky. He was wearing black cargo pants with a long black sleeve shirt with the collars raised. He seemed to be amused by something. The other occupants were wearing the standard Kumo Jounin uniform, except for one of the blondes. And again, he had to agree with his other self. She too was stunning. She had blonde hair like him, except a little darker. It reached to her back and was also tied in a ponytail. I don't want to describe the way she looks, because I'm pretty sure you all know what she looks like. Naruto tried to stand up, but the female put her hands on his shoulders, making him halt. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Your body is still too weak from your earlier fight. He tried to resist, but he knew she was right. So he just sat on the only bed in the room. After that silent reigned, after a few more moments of this, he decided to find out who they were. Mind telling who you are and what you're doing here? Oh, where are my manners? Said the female. My name is Uchiha Makoto, and the guy next to me is Uchiha Abito. Naruto's eyes widened, as well as Kyuubi's and Dark Naruto's. Uchiha thought every occupant inside the room. The female, now named Makoto, laughed inside her head. Mind telling me why you're so surprised? Naruto came back to reality after that. Maybe it's because you're supposed to be dead. Dead, said Abito. Who the hell told you we were dead? Oh, I don't know, said Naruto with sarcasm. Maybe because of a little incident known as the Uchiha Massacre. Oh, that, said Makoto like it was nothing. We will explain everything once we don't have unnecessary ears listening. Makoto shot the Kumo Shinobi a stare that said she was talking about them. Yujito scowled. You come into our country uninvited, and you're wondering why we're here. This doesn't concern you, said Makoto, her voice becoming hard. The moment you stepped into our country, it became our concern, retorted Yujito. This is getting good, said Dark Naruto as he watched everything intently from Naruto's mind. Kyuubi said nothing. Yujito, calm down said B as he placed a hand on her shoulder to ease her anger. It helped. A little. Right now. All Yujito wanted was to beat the other female into the ground. The only thing keeping her from doing that was the little rational part in her mind telling her to control her emotions. Abito was just watching everything with a smirk on his face. Now, oh, this was interesting. A cat fight. I seems as if he thinks just like dark Naruto. You still haven't told why you're here, interrupted Naruto. I told began Makoto, only for Naruto to interrupt her. I heard you. But if you don't want them to hear, why don't you kick them out? Makoto and Abito both raised their eyebrows, while the Kumo Shinobi's eyes widened. You know, began Makoto with a deadly voice. If you were anyone else, you would be dead right now. Naruto said nothing. But you do have a point. She turned towards the Kumo Shinobi. You are a hindrance. She took out her sword. Abito did nothing. If she wants to listen to him, then fine. 
but nobody orders me around. Yujito B and the rest took a fighting stance. This isn't good, thought Yujito. We're outmatch. Suddenly, Naruto appeared behind Mikoto, holding her sword down. The others were wondering what was going on. What are you doing? demanded Mikoto. Why did you listen to me? asked Naruto. Listen to you? repeated Mikoto. Then, she started laughing. After she stopped, she turned to face him. What makes you think you could order me around? whispered Mikoto into his ear. Naruto just stared at her. You were doing it because you wanted to, stated Naruto. Exactly. Naruto let her go and turned towards the Kumo Shinobi. You can leave. You have my word that they won't cause problems. Mikoto and Abito raised their eyebrows again. Yujito just stared at him. And why should we listen to you? Naruto shrugged. Because you don't have a choice. Yujito knew he was right, but didn't want to back down, her pride getting the best of her. It would be best if you come back to Kimo with us, said B. And why should we do that? Asked Makoto. Done, said Naruto. Makoto looked at him, but he ignored her. If you give us time to talk alone, we'll go with you. And we won't try to escape. He looked at Makoto, telling her that she didn't have a choice. She's looked somewhere else. Fine, said Yujito. We'll be waiting outside. With that, she and the rest of the Kumo Shinobi left the room. When they were gone, Naruto turned to the other two. Now, mind telling me why you're here? Abito looked at Makoto, telling her that she had to explain. Makoto sighed and turned to look at him. I don't know if you know, but your mother was Uzumaki Kushina, one of the best Kunoichi in history, and my best friend. Naruto remained silent, but listened intently. We became friends in the academy after we had a practice spar. We were always together, telling each other everything. Even during the war, it was fun. We were both rivals, always trying to outdo each other. And because of that, we became strong enough that we became popular, both on the battlefield and socially. Before I knew it, I was chosen to marry Fugaku, the next clan head. Makoto looked disgusted at the idea. I didn't get much say in the matter, and I was made a housewife. I never did love him, but I was happy since he gave me Itachi and later Sasuke. Naruto's eyes widened at that information. Makoto, seeing his look, sighed. Yes, I'm Itachi and Sasuke's mother. But that's not the point. Anyway, Kushina was more lucky. She managed to marry someone who she actually loved. You could say I was jealous of her. I did, however, had Itachi, so it wasn't so bad. After the war ended, I was pregnant again. But this time, Kushina was as well. She was happy, seeing that she was going to be a mother. But then a disaster happened. Makoto's face turned sad. The QB attack. I don't know the details, but both she and your father died. The Yandame Hokage. Makoto looked at him, expecting him to be surprised. But instead, he didn't do anything. She decided to ask him later. After that, the Sandame told the village you were the new Jinshuriki. Because of that, everyone knew what you carried inside of you. And well, you can realize how ignorant people can be since they thought that you were the QB itself. How foolish. But I'm getting off topic. It didn't take long for me to realize that you were Kushina's son, considering the fact that you looked just like your father. You might not know this, but I helped you any way I could. I gave you money through the Sandame. I guarded you from afar. I sent you food. I wasn't able to do much because of my clan. After that, the Uchiha massacre happened, and I won't tell you how I survive. Not now, at least. I hid myself and trained to make myself stronger, and then I met Abito, and I teamed up with him, but that's another story. After that, I kept tabs on you, making sure you were all right. You weren't the only one, but again, that's for another time. I always wanted to get you out of that village for reasons I'll tell you later. When you ditched Jiraiya, that gave me the perfect opportunity, but you gave us quite the chase. We managed to track you down here, and we saw your fight. After that, you passed out, and we brought you here. Kumo decided to get involved, though, something I hadn't thought about. After she finished, Naruto took all of this in. Now he realized that she was the one that he always sensed that was watching him when he was younger. It all made sense. Add to the fact that she was Sasuke's mom. What would he do when he found out that she was alive? He wondered. And did she want to find him? He decided he would ask her later. You should know, began Naruto, that I don't have good intentions towards Kanoha. Makoto looked at him curiously. Even Abito looked interested. I just learned some things that would make anyone angry. I wonder, though, what are your intentions towards the village? Hostile. 
answered Makoto instantly. Our clan was betrayed by Kanoha. Nardo narrowed his eyes at that. How funny that a village who promoted loyalty and teamwork would instantly betray her allies. But this was good news for him, though. I see, said Naruto. My reasons are the same. Both Uchiha's eyes widened. I will tell you the details later, but I do have one question. He faced both of them. Will you join me and have us take our vengeance to the village that took our families from us? He extended his arm towards Makoto. She looked at him, then at Abito. He nodded his head slightly, telling Makoto that he agreed. She smiled, then faced Naruto. She took his arm with hers. We accept. The sky was dark. Rain fell. One person watched this from a platform of a huge tower. When, he wondered, would there be no more suffering in this world? Pain, said a soft, gentle female voice from inside the tower. The Four Tails has been captured. Yes, he thought. One more step towards peace. The Akatsuki had recently started to move in the hunt for the Jinshuriki. The Five Tails was the first captured, then the Six Tails, and now the Four Tails. Three tailed beasts in their possession in just a matter of months. IWA had been the most affected, losing both of their Jinshuriki. But that old fool doesn't care about them, thought Pain. All he cares about is himself. Good job, Conan. You may leave. Conan bowed and disappeared back inside the tower. Pain watched the rain fall once again. Peace would soon fall the world. He would make it happen, and anyone who stood in his way would be destroyed. It was his dream. And most of all, it was the dream of his best friend who died while trying to achieve it. Then the rain would stop falling in his homeland. For now, though, the rain continued to fall. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you want next part of this series, then please make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. Also, check out the author and their work details in description. Stay hydrated. Keep until then. Bye-bye.